Hello everybody, my name is Lino Tadros and in this video we're going to create a two-part, part one and part two for installing Sitefinity 15.1 and the second one is to show you what's the best way to upgrade a Sitefinity from one version to the other going forward. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are inside of uh, Visual Studio 2022. I'm going to go ahead and say File, New, Project. And what I'm interested in doing right now is to create the CMS portion of Sitefinity itself. And that has to be an ASP.NET web application, but it has to be a .NET framework. It cannot be a core and definitely cannot be a standard. So it has to be .NET framework. Be careful with that. I'm going to click on this. We'll say next. And then we'll give it a name. We'll call it, for instance, SF15.1 demo. That's good enough for me. I'll put on my E drive. Just remember the framework has to say .NET Framework 4.8. If you don't do this and you have any other version than 4.8, like 4.7 or 7.1, 7.2, this will work right now. But once we convert it into a Cyfinity site, it will fail. The NuGet packages will not work. So be careful with that. All right, let's go ahead and say create. Again, we have a lot of different choices. The two choices that you have are really the first two, empty or web forms. That is the main structure currently of the CMS system of Sitefinity. Do not use MVC or web API or SPA application. None of them will work for Sitefinity. So it has to be one of the two at the top. In my case, I always like to start with empty and start completely from the, from the beginning. I'm not going to actually enable HTTPS. I don't want to install developer certificates or anything on my machine. So let's go ahead and say create. And now it's creating a project on my E drive that is very simple, has nothing to do with Sitefinity at all. As you can see here, it's the absolutely empty web form application available for ASP.NET. All right, great. All right, to turn this project into a real Sitefinity project, I have one of two ways of doing it. The first one is to right click on the SF15 one demo, and I can say manage NuGet packages. Uh, you want to make sure that you install the package source from NuGet from Sitefinity itself because the official NuGet packages from uh, Sitefinity are not available on the main NuGet.org, which is the Microsoft repository. The way to do that is to click on this uh, gear and then under page source, package source, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, notice I have it in here called Sitefinity. You can call it anything you want, but the URL has to be HTTPS NuGet.Sitefinity.com slash NuGet. So if you don't have one of those in here, click on the plus sign, create a new one, give it whatever name you want. And then the source has to be, as you can see in here, stop the video and write it down, HTTPS uh, NuGet.Sitefinity.com slash NuGet. Once you do that, the system will be able to find it when you look for it. So this is one way of doing it. The other way that I definitely recommend for you uh, to consider as well, I'm going to close this down, close all the stuff down. I usually like to do it from at the bottom in here using the package console itself for NuGet. So I'm going to say tools and we'll go down here where it says NuGet package manager. The first option is called package manager console. We'll click on that. And notice the package console is open in here. And the way to do it will say install dash package, one word with a dash in between, no spaces at all. And in here you have multiple options. You can uh, install the headless way of the CMS. That means you are going to use a render maybe in React or .NET Core for ASP.NET or something like that. But um, Or you can use the progress.sitefinity. Uh, uh, NuGet package. The one I usually like to do in the beginning when I need the kitchen sink because I don't know what my site is going to need or not need in the future, I will start with a Telerik.Sitefinity.all. So I'm going to say here Telerik.Sitefinity.all and that's the name of the NuGet package. It will install pretty much everything into this uh, uh, Sitefinity 151 demo. And if you leave it like that, it will go into the repository and find out the latest and greatest package available for that. All right. So right now, as of the time of this recording, there is a new one that just went out, which is called 15.1.5321. Uh, 5321 was just released a few days ago, but I don't want to install this one because I want to upgrade to that in the next video as well in part two. So uh, the way to actually choose a specific version, you would put a dash and capital V version like that. And then we'll say 15.1.8300. And that is the official release of 15.1 that came out last month. All right, let's go ahead and push enter and see what would happen. Notice the system is now communicating with uh, the repository from Sitefinity. It found it um, and is going to start installing. So notice it's going to be going through each one by one in here. 
and I'm gonna let it run. It usually takes a couple of minutes for the whole thing to install, but notice all the DLLs, there is about over 300 of them that will have to be in, installed in the uh, bin folder and references will be created. Not only that, but remember all the different folders that Syfinity needs like resource packages and a lot of other things as well for MVC folder, uh, app underscore data, all the stuff will have to be installed using uh, PowerShell scripts as well. So we let it run and I'll come back after this is complete. And indeed it took a few minutes, but at the end it finished and Visual Studio says you changed way too many things inside of this uh, folder or this uh, project. So would you like me to reload everything? Usually you want to say yes on that, reload all. And notice it added all the folders and all the files needed for Syfinity to work. One of the things I usually like to do, uh, because the, uh, the NuGet packages from Syfinity installs both resource packages 4 and 5, and I only use 5. So you're more than welcome to come in here and delete the resources for 4 if you'd like as well. Once you do that, we can actually compile with right click and say build and make sure that this builds correctly. See so build started at the bottom in here. You wait until it says build succeeded. Once that is done, that means you have everything you need to run Sidefinity 15.1 with no problems. And voila, it says build succeeded. Now I can run. Notice during the installation, nobody asked me about a license. Nobody asked me about a SQL Server database. None of that. You'll have to run this project he here locally on your machine. And then the system will find out, hey, you don't have a license. I need a license. Give it to it. And then it will say, hey, you don't have a database. I need a database. So all the stuff will happen during the first run. So let's go ahead and run it without debugging. I'm going to click on this button at the top. And there it is, it shows up on a different monitor. Let me bring the window in here for uh, running Chrome. So you'll notice immediately it compiled the project and it found out that you don't have a license. You have one or two options. You can actually log in into your sitefinity.com on the progress website on the portal. But that only works if you have only one license available in your account. And somebody like me, for instance, consultant, have a lot of different customers and I maintain their license. So when you log in, I have like 40 different licenses in there, for instance, that might be a problem and the system will not know which one you want. So in my case, I always have to upload the LIC file that I downloaded from my portal manually. I can't use this, but for all of you that have only one license, this would be great. It will log in, grab the license and do it for you. In my case, I'm going to go in here, choose a, a, a license for 15.1 and let's go here under my download and I have the SF licenses and there is the 15.1. I'm going to say activate this license and I'll go to all the way at the bottom and say continue and that will actually get us to where we need to go. But now there is another problem. The system cannot start because there is no database. So it will ask me which database would you like to use. Notice there is no more Oracle. There is no more um, MySQL, it has to be based on Microsoft SQL Server, Express, or the regular standard enterprise or web as well. In my case in here, I can say SQL Server Express, that is totally okay. I'm gonna click on that, we'll say continue. And that will actually now start the sequence of installing hundreds of different tables and so on. But one thing was not asked again, who's gonna be at least the one admin on the system because it could not finish. If it finishes, we're going to have an orphan system. Nobody can log into it. So I'm going to say my first name is Lino, last name is Tadros, and I'm going to use Lino at foo.com. We'll give it admin1234, for instance, and we'll add admin1234 one more time, and we'll say I am done. And now it's going to continue finishing up hundreds of different uh, tables and views and so on. I'm going to even save my, uh, my username and password so I don't have to type it in every time. I'm going to come back after the database is created to continue. And there you go. After a couple of minutes of uh, creating all the tables and everything else, it took me directly to my dashboard. Notice I'm running on local host with a port number. This is IS Express. Uh, and you'll notice that this is the dashboard for Sitefinity 15.1. So it looks like we're in pretty good shape. Just let's go ahead and make sure that we can create a page. We'll say create a page in here. We'll call it the home page, for instance. Continue. We'll choose from one of these Bootstrap uh, 5 uh, templates that come with the system. I'm using the third one, which is only has a header and a footer. We'll come in here and we'll say welcome to Sitefinity 15.1. How about that? 
I'm gonna go say got it and in here on the right side I'm gonna grab one of the content blocks put it in the middle and we'll say create content and easily in here we'll say welcome to Syfinity 15.1 excellent let me even highlight it change the format for it to heading 2 we'll center it on the screen and we'll say save and we should be good to go. I'll publish this page. So now we have one published page, which is the home page. Doesn't say much, but at least it will let us know that the system is working. And if you go back to make sure that everything is working correctly, click on the view in here. Let me skip this tutorial. We'll say view and it will compile it for the first time. It will not have to do that again unless I make changes to this page. But once it's done, it should say welcome to Syfinity 15.1 and my site is ready for development and it's ready for uh, making changes and modification to the system. So thank you for listening to this first part. And the second part uh, will be about how to upgrade this uh, specific site 15.18300 to the latest version. And it could be coming in from Syfinity 14 or 13 or 15.0. Uh, we'll, we'll do the same thing in the next video. Thank you.